Okay, hello everyone again. So this is Fidel Master Victor Neustroyev, and we are going to talk about typical ideas in Juco Piano, which is Italian game. So Italian game is uh, is usually about slow maneuvering and improving your pieces, and it's unlikely to be a tactical game. So this is what I hate in the Italian game, but. Unfortunately, I have to play this opening because I play e4. Uh, now, e4 usually leads to more open positions, but sometimes you have to play against e4, uh, against e5. And this is where Italian is probably one of the best solutions because uh, otherwise you have to learn. Uh, otherwise, you have to learn, uh, let's say, such openings like Rui Lopez or Scotch game, which, uh, which don't have, which doesn't provide you with any advantage. Well, Italian game doesn't provide you with an advantage too, in case of black plays properly. But if you know some typical ideas, then you have more chances to play for a win. Okay, so please let me know whether the video and audio quality is good so let me open the chat okay suriram tells uh, that he cannot hear anything but i think it was because i was uh because uh i wasn't uh talking i wasn't saying anything okay so guys uh there is a recording of this event and if you need it you can message me so you can message me at tricksofchess at gmail.com and I'll send you the recording. There is no need to record it to your computer. So don't worry, I'll send uh, the recording to everyone if you guys need it. Okay, all is good, let's start. And by the way, by security, because of security reasons, uh, you are not allowed to show your cameras. So last time we experienced a problem with it. Well, uh, one uh, guy entered our Zoom meeting with three different accounts, and then he was demonstrated some inappropriate videos uh, using his webcam. So this time this feature is prohibited. Maybe later I'll make it enable uh, for people that I know personally. Okay, so, well, yeah, we are going. Uh, what should I do? Why you send Gmail? Okay, guys, uh, no. Well, if you want to watch this uh, webinar, to watch the recording of this webinar, just email me and I'll send you the link where you can download it and watch it. So if you have any other questions after the webinar, you can also message me. Okay, uh, fine. So how many participants? So eight participants we have today, but I think people will be joining. Uh, well, um, first of all, I would like to demonstrate some of my games. I play Italian as white. And uh, when people say that Italian game are boring and they don't want to play it, I partially agree. Sometimes they are. And the first part of the game is really boring. But then tactics finally appear. Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, so probably you see it too much. So let it, it should be limited to this and this. So for today, I prepared several games uh, some of my games some of the games played by grandmasters but this is where you can at least learn how to maneuver slowly with your pieces okay so this is the board let's uh, everything should work uh this uh, webinar is also streaming to youtube uh but of course it's better to watch it uh here by participating in our zoom meeting So let's start. This is the game that I played uh, in October, oh, I think not in October, in uh, 
September uh, 2023. So this is one of the recent games I played. Uh, and I played against actually a 1500 rated player, but she played really well until a certain moment. So the game started with ordinary moves, castle, knight f6, d3. This is how I was uh, playing um, against the Italian game that time. h6, so they stopped me from playing this move. I play a4. Why a4 move is uh, helpful in Italian? Because very often black wants to capture my bishop with knight a5 idea. They cannot do it right away because I take on e5. But I decided that h3 is probably too early because my opponent isn't castled. And instead he may play g5 and g4. And uh, after he exchanges my h-pawn, the g-file is opened in order to perform uh, some attack through the g-file and attack my king. So that's why I was uh, guessing about this and this move. I was choosing them, choosing them on this and that. So I decided to play a4. With a4, I also have an idea of playing a5, uh, which I didn't use this time, but this is very common. And this is what we can learn in our later games that we are going to observe today. So castle. And now after castle is played, I play h3 uh, to stop bishop g4. So, for example, if this move, which I think is one of the possible ways to play, then knight d5 and rook goes there. I'm pressuring e5, but I'm not going to take it right away. Well, actually, if let's say they play a random move, I think I can take knight takes, rook takes, and bishop f2. But this time, after... This move I can play queen f3. Uh -huh. And then after this, I have this, which allows me to end with two minor pieces against the rook. So it's fine. If they play a random move, the pawn is hanging, but they could uh, continue, for example, with bishop e6 instead, protecting on d5. And now knight takes e5 doesn't work. I have to play something else, like knight d2, knight e4, and so on. Okay. This is this didn't happen in the game, but I was completely prepared against it. D6 was played. This is a quite a natural move. So here again, A5 does make sense. I played C3. And with C3, I'm threatening to play B4 and A5 to trap the bishop. That's why this is a must. Rook E1. Uh, well, so I played all the moves that I learned. And, well, I was expecting this move, after which I wanted to continue with b4. Instead, black played this move, and in my opinion, it was an accuracy. So, what do you, what can you say about this position? What is the most common plan for white? Well, maybe you're already familiar with it. So, you guys, your um, videos do not work, but you can uh, unmute your microphone and uh, pronounce what you think. Or you can just type in the chat. How would you continue with white? I'm expecting to play b4, yeah. So, sure. okay. b4 does make sense. Quite natural. But uh, you're playing with pawns too much. So maybe it makes sense to develop pieces. Okay. So this is the most common plan. Knight goes there. It also a very common plan in the Rui Lopez. Uh, because where else this knight can be? On e3, g3, or maybe on c4 too. But there is a bishop on c4 right now. So I'm unlikely to bring the knight there. Uh, with the knight on g3 controls f5, and uh, eventually you can play knight to f5 if you think it's... Um, it does make sense for you if you think you want to attack more squares, especially on the king side. Uh, yeah, but this plan it consists of at least three tempi. That's why it's very slow. However, uh, slow plans are possible in close position. You should make sure that uh, your opponent has no counterattack in the center by doing this move, for example. But looks like they don't have it. Um, so bishop e6 or bishop e3 is another suggestion. Well, yes, but what I don't like about this move is that uh, if the exchange is played, 
then what? If I take with the pawn, I weaken the f4 square and they can potentially occupy it with these moves. Now, knight h5 doesn't work often because I have knight e5 as a discovered attack, but knight e7, knight g6 works perfectly well. If I decide to take with the pawn, then what was the purpose of the rook e1 move? Because the rook is definitely better on the f file. So bishop e3, no. So I play knight bd2, rook e8. Mm -hmm. Any suggestions? Okay, if not, I will mute you back. You can unmute you when uh, you want to say something. Okay, so rook e8. Uh, well, doing this is fine, but I thought that he gonna do this move, so I reacted with this move immediately. So d4, uh, d5 is still a possibility here. d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5. And in this position, I think I just wanted to play queen b3 or queen c2. Protecting my pawn on c3. If I do queen v3, they do bishop e6. Uh, it looks like I can capture only five in this position. Knight e5, knight e5, rook e5, and this time bishop f2 doesn't work because after king f2, queen f6, I have knight f3, which protects my rook. So bishop e6 was played right away. Okay. Uh, what do you think about this move? So our opponent decided to play bishop e6. It, it is quite similar to bishop e3 suggestion. What do you think? Should we take or should we not? So I'm waiting for your suggestions, guys. Uh, oh, yeah, well, you definitely, it doesn't make sense to continue with knight f1 because they take and double your pawns. Not a tragedy. At least you stop d5. But, uh, well, which plan you may continue after that? Bishop b2, I think. Bishop a2. Oh, interesting. Bishop b2. Ah, b2. So you let them take. Uh, okay, yes, it's possible. Then we can capture with the knight. It definitely does make sense. But, uh, well, why bishop d2? Are you going to play d4? Considering it later on, yeah, if there's a trade on uh, c4. Uh huh. Well, yeah, if there is a trade on c4, then d4 later is definitely possible. But don't forget that uh there can be the b4 hanging here so bishop b2 does make sense very often however in this position i decided to keep the bishop on this diagonal because uh, i want to prevent this maneuver so i actually decided to take because what now if f takes e6 then uh, there is not enough pressure on f2 so i am com completely fine and in such positions, d4 actually looks better than um, d4 earlier. I undouble the pawns, which for beginners seems to be unlog not logical, but uh, this strategy does make sense because uh, after they play e5, they weaken the light squares. And having the pawn on e6 means to make this pawn the object of the attack. I'm not saying that this move should be played immediately, so probably first I need to maybe play knight c4, uh, move my bishop somewhere, and then play b5 to chase this knight away, and then d4. So something like that could make more sense. Or maybe I just do this, play b5, and then, well, I don't like bishop b2 anyway, because knight f4 is coming. So anyway, they took with the rook, which is quite logical. And this is where I want you to... Uh, learn a very common idea that allows white to play for a win. Maybe you can uh, guess this idea. Okay, try to guess the idea and I'll uh, go back so to this position if f takes e6 and uh, there is a, a consideration that this move is possible. Well, yes, this move is possible, but it's likely to lead to uh, more disadvantages for their positions. 
uh, because uh, after e takes d5, e takes d5, and let's say queen b3, there is a pin. The pawn on e5 is the object of the attack, and uh, I can always play b5. Well, if I move the rook to b1, I can always play b5 in order to chase this knight away, which will weaken the pawn. So, for example, if in this position I do this move, d5 doesn't work because of b5, a takes, a takes, knight a5, knight simply goes to e5. So I gain the pawn. That's why actually after f takes e6, d5 uh, sometimes work, but very rare. Let's talk about this position. What should I do? Okay, so knight f1 or queen to b3. Interesting. Yeah, queen b3 is interesting move. Uh, the move I played is rook b1. What is the idea behind rook b1 move? The idea is to play b5. But how I also combine b5 with knight c4. Now, when the bishop has to go, well, if we double their pawns, it definitely makes the enemy position worse. So knight c4, bishop a7, and then b5. If they take, I take, the knight moves away, and then I play b6. And of course, my position is not winning. It's just very slightly better. If they take, I'll, uh, I can take, but I can also keep the bishop blocked on a7. So that's why I think they have to take with the bishop, which I have to take too. And then rook b6, b7 is more a weakness. Queen c8, then maybe c4, because they can never play uh, this move. And then I'm going to attack the b7 pawn. At least I get a plan which allows me to play for a win in this approximately equal position. So I played queen c2. Maybe b6 was better, but okay, knight g6, and then I decided that it's time to play b6. The knight is not here, so it cannot go back to c6. That's why b6 works really uh, better than uh, it uh, would work one move before. c takes b4, b6, so in this position I took with the knight. I was expecting something this to happen. Then queen c8, and this is where I was thinking I was debating between uh, this move, this move, and this move. I wanted to play queen b3, but no, it didn't make much sense. So I think c4 is the best move to control the g5 square. And because I have a light duck squared bishop, I may obtain advantage. These knights are not so well, well, these knights are not so good. And uh, I can use my bishop by taking his maybe this pawn, so maybe queen b3 after that, bishop b3. There will be a weakness here and here on b7 and d6. So my opponent played rook b8. So then again, c4 to control this, because they are likely to exchange their bishop for the knight anyway, because they cannot tolerate this knight. But I played bishop a3 move. So bishop takes b6, and they still have to capture with the rook. Uh, and then d5 happens. So with such a move, they wanted to simplify the position. However, I have an advantage because the b7 is the object of the attack and potentially a weakness. Rook eb1, d takes e4, d takes e4. So this may be a weakness too, but uh, b7 is more weak. Rook b6... Rook takes b6. So I'm stopping this pawn and adding more pressure. I was uh, expecting this move, after which I wanted to go back with the rook and then try to play queen b3, remaneuver my knights, try to enter the enemy territory, and my position would be just a little better than, um, than it was before. However, my opponent played this move. 
queen c8. I decided to move my queen to b3 and And this was a kind of a trap. So, of course, I understood that my opponent uh, is unlikely to get trapped into this, but I just wanted to double to tie these pieces to the defense of b7. Then I wanted to remaneuver my knight like that, maybe get it to g6. Uh, maybe I can also do something like that with the bishop. I don't know how, maybe with queen b4. So it seems to be quite logical for me. At least I wanted to do these moves. Uh, well, who can tell me what's wrong with knight e4 move? Rook takes g6, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's rook takes g6. Uh, well, well, that's why I left this pawn hanging. So what did my opponent what what my opponent should do in this position so because queen b3 is actually quite a tricky move for example if they play something like that i can take the pawn on h6 and after g takes f6 i gain a pawn and have more chances to play for a win uh that's why i can uh, hardly suggest a good move because if the king goes there it's queen f7 so if this knight moves then it's rook g6. So uh, it's a kind of a, like a zogd one because it's hard to suggest a good move and h6 is hanging. So, but the engine thinks that white is just a very little better and uh, there is some advantage, but uh, queen c7, bishop h6, and then for example, knight e7, the bishop goes back and knight takes e4. This is a weakness, but after knight c6, they are able to protect it. So finally, the uh, number of pawns would be equal. So then let's say I can play uh, g4 in this position to get my king another square to escape. But actually, uh, it's mainly to control the f5 square and maybe relocate my knight. Mm, then, well, white is better. White is uh, plus 0 0.5 with some chances to play for a win, but if black plays properly, that position won't be, wouldn't be winning. However, my opponent played knight d7 move, and that was, of course, a terrible blunder because of the same reason, because of rook takes g6. So there is nothing they can do. They played knight c5, but... It's completely losing. For some reason, I don't know why, uh, but it's uh, mainly here in Argentina, uh, people do not resign uh, in being a piece down. So, because when I was playing in Europe, uh, in Novosibirsk, in uh, Moscow, uh, people, uh, well, a player who is down a piece usually resigns because he thinks that against uh, such a strong player, without a piece, he has no chances. And I actually do the same thing too. If I see there is no compensation and uh, I violate my position as uh, absolutely lost, I can make a few more moves to see that the position becomes complicated or not. And then I resign. But here we kept playing for 10 moves more, which I don't understand. So finally, I won the game. So from this uh, game, I want you to remember this maneuver. Rook b1 knight c4 b5 and b6 this is a very typical idea okay uh fine so Keep it in mind. Then I would like to talk about the second game. I also played this game in uh, here in Argentina. Uh, however, my opponent was uh, quite strong. Actually, his rating was 1700 only, but uh, it seems to me that he played as he was at 2100. So I think he is just underrated person. Uh, it was an uh, Italian game again, but this time it was a uh, more specific position. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. Then again, I play d3 to protect the pawn, uh, d6, 
and I play the this because if I play this, as I told you, it's knight a5. Then I have to go there, but again, it's c6b5, and it doesn't suit me because I have to exchange this bishop for the knight. So a4, a6, and c3 with the idea of doing b4. So bishop goes to a7, there is no rush with b4, so I played rook e1. My opponent continued with this move, and this is where I played knight bd2. Well, actually, b4 was a better move, and maybe d4 could also make sense. What I didn't like about d4 is that they can play bishop g4. And then how do I defend? Bishop a3, but then e4 is vulnerable. Of course, there is a pin, but no, I didn't like it. Uh, I do not like such complications. So uh, b4 was good. I played knight d2 instead. And my opponent reacted with g5. So people who are saying uh, that Juko uh, uh, piano are boring uh, sometimes can be uh, mistaken because it may lead to a very specific positions when a lot of calculations should be applied to not uh, make a mistake. Okay, so what do you think? What, what do you think white should do? Okay, so thank you for your suggestions. I'll try to answer the question from Sri Ram. Can you keep a webinar like you play and online on chess.com and teach us how to go to 2000 rating? Okay. Well, well, what I what I think is that uh, the way to reach 2000 should be different for for everyone because. Uh, every player struggles with his own problems. And uh, um, of course, there are some universal uh, solutions like doing tons of puzzles, uh, analyzing your own games after you play them, uh, building an opening repertoire, which everyone needs. But there are also some specifics. For example, if a player is bad with planning, then this is what he should focus on. If he is bad with calculation, then he should work with calculation more. If he doesn't see tactics, then he should work on tactical vision. So it depends. There is no universal solution which makes you a 2000 player right away. But there are things that you can do that every one of you guys can do in order to improve, like doing tactics regularly, like analyzing your own games, like, well, actually hiring a coach uh, and uh, work consistently will help you too. Uh, okay, so d4, knight f1, and h3. Well, I don't think d4 works because they can capture on d4 and then with the knight. So maybe you mean that we can play e5 in this position. Looks interesting, actually. Oh, what I think is that they can play d4. And what's then? So take, take. The knight has to go. I don't think this is a favorable position for white. So d4 probably doesn't work. So let's say the knight goes here. And then they can do at least knight e4, capturing on h4. So I don't like it. Uh, h3. Well, some of you guys say h3. Why h3 is a mistake here? You see, this guy starts an attack on the king side. He wants to checkmate our king. What we should do is to not let him exchange the pawns because while the pawns are uh, located on h and g files, it's hard for him to get his queen and rook uh, activated and uh, let them get coordinated in order to succeed with a checkmate. So that's why our task is to keep the pawn structure closed or blocked. That's why h3 is definitely, a, I would say, even a blunder. After g4, what should I do? The g file is already semi-open. The h file is already semi-open. There is a dangerous pin, moreover. So h3 definitely doesn't work. King h1, okay, king h1 with the idea of doing this. But the problem is that you simply blunder the pawn on f2. 
So King H1 doesn't make sense. Knight F1 does work. Yes. So Peter was uh, was correct. I played this move. Knight F1. Knight goes to G3, but he plays this move, and I have to retreat with this knight to D2, and not to H4. If I did Knight H4, he would do this. Pawn takes, queen h4, and then I have to play bishop e3 to support it here. It's not bad. I definitely have some compensation after the exchange of the bishops, but I do not consider that this compensation is enough. So that's why I just retreat. Knight h5. He starts the attack. Knight goes there, and uh, doing this move means to... Well, actually, this move was a, one of the possible options, and if he does this move, I can take and then play d4, or I can play d4 first, and then take, this is how I eliminate the bishop activity. So that was possible. I didn't like this move because I thought that my knight goes away from the place of action. So I played knight to e3 instead, which was also fine. Knight goes to f4, and now this knight goes to f1, because I think that having the knights on e3 and g3 would be better, because I can occupy f5 if I need it, I could... Uh, stop his activity on the king's side with the knight on g3. He is not threatening these two pawns. So queen f6 was played. So this is where I considered several options. And now because of the king here and the rook is in front of it, I had several ideas. I could play knight f5 and then d4 trying to undermine this pawn. So for example, knight f5, bishop f5, bishop f4, then if they play this move, I can just move the bishop back. If they, well, I could also take here, and after queen takes, I could play d4, which was fine too. I'm a pawn down, <clears throat> but uh, it looks uh, it looks okay. Uh, for example, let's say he castles. Uh, then maybe knight g3, queen g7, then maybe b4. And I have some compensation because of a strong attack on the queen side. So knight f5 was a possibility. I was considering this move, but uh, I thought that maybe I'll make mistake uh, in, in calculation and uh, overlook something. So that's why I decided to play a more solid move. So my opponent continued with a pawn march there. And now I I think I played the move that I'm proud of. Can you guess which move I'm talking about? So remember that we are doing a Juku Piano game analysis. And uh, that's why it's something about strategy, something about maneuvering and better coordination among your pieces. I played this move because this is a typical idea that I was aware of. Okay, so knight d5. Okay, what's wrong with knight d5 move? This is what's wrong with knight d5 move. And then he can take on d5 at least. And gain the piece back. So this is a problem. So definitely not knight d5. Knight fg3 was interesting. Yeah, but uh, what can he do? Can he, can he play this move? So, for example, this. Then what? I go back, probably. Maybe I go to f5. Well, going to f5 is possible. Well, if I go to f5, he does play g3. And uh, it's a kind of a problem with this pin. I can show you. So, g3, h takes, h takes. And if I do this, then he takes on f5 and my pawn structure is ruined. Uh, if I take with the knight, uh, then he has an open file, so he can continue with, with which move? Knight, uh, at least with queen h4, and it seems to be quite dangerous because he is about to take here, deliver a check and take the pawn on g2. So it's a bit risky. Okay, so so guys, uh, what you uh, may learn from this position is that this is a weakness, right? So uh, this knight is immobilized. We cannot jump there or here. 
because of the bishop attack and then some discovered attack based on the queen activity and uh, the knight move from f4. So that's why we need to save it. Well, uh, 3 rm. So why do you suggest g3? g3 is just a blunder. So the move I played was a rook a2. So the piece on one flank affects what's going on on the other flank. Now I'm not afraid of, there is no discovered attack. And if I move this knight and he takes, I just simply take with my rook. So this move is actually quite clever because this rook is not doing much. Also, how why this move is helpful? My bishop is now protecting the rook. What does it mean? So let me play some just random moves for you to illustrate it. Let's say knight d5, knight d5, bishop d5. Let's say he plays something. Uh, and then I can continue with b5 move. a takes b5, a takes b5. And if my rook was there, then this bishop sacrifice in order to create a discovery that could make sense. But this time my rook is protected. And even if I had a piece blocking the connection among these pieces, the rook wouldn't be hanging because the bishop protects it. Well, if now this, I take with my rook anyway. So this is a helpful move. I protect on f2 and I also make my rook protect, uh, protecting. I also protect my rook in order to play b5 later in the game. So my opponent played rook g8, which is a bit slow. Knight d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5. Well, uh, okay, Peter, I don't agree with you regarding that my pieces on the back rank are a bit passive. Uh, why? Mm, and you think that his pieces are more active. Uh, my pieces are very close to the place of action. And if I need them, I can definitely join it. So after rook g8, actually, my position is already better. And after rook a2, the position is approximately equal. The engine thinks it's zeros. And after rook g8, the engine thinks I'm plus 0 0.7. So uh, your pieces can be active even if they are located on the back rank. So development is not about moving the pieces away from their initial positions. It's more about getting better coordination. And my pieces are better coordination because they are located quite close to each other and, then can, and they can get the control over important squares. such as uh, well, d5, f4, f5, f2 is protecting. This rook is important because uh, both players assume that the e-file will be open soon. Uh, his position seems, his pieces seems uh, more active because his knight is already into my territory. His pawns are already advanced to the fourth rank, but he has a worse pieces coordination. That's the reason why my position is better. So knight d5, knight d5, e takes d5. And now I think he is in a difficult situation. So if he does this move, I can play d4. And this is how I open the position to obtain the counterplay in the center. Because if he takes, I can simply double the rooks. If he doesn't take, but play something logical like knight g6, then bishop d3, so I'm trying to liquidate this knight, and then e5 becomes a weakness. For example, knight f4, d takes e5, d takes e5, bishop f4, queen takes, and then I simply capture on e5. So he takes, I just pin it. So that's why here, if that would happen, he would be in a tough situation. But this guy found a very nice resource. He played g3 to sacrifice the pawn. That was quite clever, and I actually underestimated it. I thought that this is just a blunder. I thought that this is just his last hope. But this move was clever, and if only I calculated all the consequences, I would definitely capture with the pawn. Then he plays this move, and then I would continue with queen d2, trying to exchange the queens. I took with the knight. I took with the knight and I let my opponent to continue with this move. Then queen d2. So here, for example, knight h5 seems logical, but this is a blunder. Now two of my pieces are under the attack. And... Ah, actually, no. Queen g6, uh, queen g4 works. 
then knight f6, and I gain the material back. But if he did queen h4, then I am in the trouble, because now after this move, he just simply takes with the rook, and uh, I'm a queen down. So I played queen d2, and this is where he had to play this move. I would continue with d4. My position is still better, but just a little. He played h4, and what do you think he missed? There were several ways to continue for me. 94. Yeah, so well, this is how I played in the game. What can you say about this? Seems to be risky because he takes here and then he threatens here. So, for example, if I uh, take here with the pawn, he takes, he takes there. And then his position is fine. There is a lot of pressure. Well, yeah, that was possible to play for me too. By the way, what does the engine think? The engine thinks I'm better. Yeah, I could just simply take on c6. And that was actually the best move. I played the second best move. Uh, so d takes c6. Uh, c takes b7 is better. And here, well, this is the line I calculated. And uh, after g takes f2, I didn't realize that I can just sacrifice the queen. So bishop f2, rook takes f2. And his queen is now hanging. So he can sacrifice his queen for the rook and uh, play this position with extra exchange, but it's completely lost. He may move his queen back, but then I take, uh, but then I first play here, bishop f7, king d7, then I promote, then I take on g8, and after I play c4, again, my position is better because of two extra pawns. So I have two rooks and two extra pawns for the queen. It's completely winning. Of course, it requires some accurate play, but my king is relatively safe, so that's why it's winning. This is what I missed. Uh, I didn't realize that I can sacrifice the queen here. Uh, so I played knight e4, the most logical move. And if he did this move, I was about to play this, to exchange the queens. He instead played queen f5. Can you guess the second move? Again, in this position, there were two good moves, and I played the second best. Well, is there a simple way to avoid problems for white? Remember that his knight is hanging, but I cannot take it right now because of um, bishop of three ideas. Queen h6. Okay, so yes, you're right. This is the move I played. Is there a better way to play? He takes e6. No, I think d takes c6 doesn't work. d takes c6, so how does he play? Bishop f3? Yeah, bishop f3, then, then what? Because, uh, well, if I play g3, queen h3. Okay, there is a good question from 3rem. I'm going to... Okay, so when 3rem go, is going to sacrifice, he spends a lot of time... Uh, calculating, but then finally uh, decides to not take a risk and avoid the sacrifice. So, uh, well, what can I say about sacrifices? They should be well calculated. If you calculate and you see it doesn't work, stop calculating it and consider uh, better moves. If you are low on time, uh, then, and if you see that this sacrifice, you're not sure about the sacrifice, then play something that is uh, more solid and don't spend all of your time. So it depends. If you have enough time to think, think. Uh, but once you see it doesn't work, don't take this risk. So I am against unsound sacrifices. So, uh, well, I sacrifice myself, but if I see that there, at least there is a compensation. So I'm not like Mikhail Tal, who was sacrificing for um, uh, by intuition. 
And actually, Tal was all very often overlooking something. However, the positions were so complicated that both players made a mistake. And if you, well, I had a webinar devoted to his sacrifices. And uh, uh, so I analyzed a lot of his games. So if you see that uh, sometimes if his opponent played well, there was, uh, uh, I mean, the position was solid enough to to avoid problems and successfully defeat Tal. But uh, because his opponents were also not good, especially in tactical play and the ability to defense, very often they didn't found uh, didn't find a proper solution and just lost because of it. So bishop f7, knight g5. Well, no, I don't think it works. Bishop f7. Okay, let me check it out. So, so yeah, actually, it it works. Bishop f7, uh, but there was. Ah, no, 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 not in this position. Yeah, we are talking about this position. But in that position, yes, bishop f7 was something okay. Um, but uh, the position was approximately equal. So here, queen h6 is the move I played, but there is this move, and then I exchange the queens. I didn't look at this move like most of you because I thought it's just a blunder, but it wasn't. Knight d6, a double check, the king has to move. Knight f5, and after bishop f5, I just gain a piece back. And then I also take on a 4 Okay, so that was the simplest move. I played queen h6, and I think um, I think I had an idea that John had in mind. So Lichess today is not working so well. Uh, okay, so bishop f3 with the idea of this, but then I have knight f6, and he cannot sacrifice his queen. Uh, if he does this move, then knight g8. And if he does queen g4, I just exchange the queens, so there is no checkmate. That's why he is forced to play king to e7. But then I take with a check and capture on h4, which now allows me to play g3, and I do not let his queen to go to h3 because of my queen on the h file already. So this is how the position continues. So what should I do in this position? He's definitely into the attack, but he's down the material. And what I need is to just successfully defend my position. I play this move, he plays this, and I offer an exchange to simplify. However, he does this move, threatening the mate. But now, because of d4, my bishop can go back. D takes e5, D takes e5, and of course there were uh, simple moves like queen f5, for example, to pin him. I decided that it's time to sacrifice. To sacrifice the material back, I'm only a few pawns up. Uh, the king has to move to d7, which I actually thought that he goes to d8 or f8, which was better for me, but d7 was definitely a better move. I played this. Bishop goes to b6, and I play this move. Threatening with c5, and then queen goes there. Uh, he played rook e8 and lost the game immediately. Uh, we will... No, wait a sec. Ah, no, no, no. I, this is what I should play. But I played h4, at, and I thought that he takes on h4. Uh, in such a case... I would continue the game with queen f5. King moves. Where does the king move? Uh, so let's say to e8. And then I play bishop h3. Threatening this. Take. Actually, no. Threatening check. King f8. Uh, queen c8. King e7, for example. And then I can take here. Or if king g7, I still can capture the rook and then capture his queen. So I would win the rook. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but the problem is that he could capture on g3, bishop g3, queen g3. However, after queen f1, there are no checks while his own king is in the trouble. And the queen is in the trouble too. So that's why this position would be winning. 
This is what, what my plan was. But he didn't take on h4. He continued with this move and simply lost the game after this. Because king d8, bishop g5. So actually, uh, Italian game can be full of tactics. Uh, you should just wait for such a moment and prepare your pieces to be ready for this um, for this attack, uh, for this, uh, I mean, tactical play. What tactical motive you should, what, tech, oh, uh, what typical idea you should learn? Well, definitely this maneuver to relocate the knight to g3 or to locate the knight to e3. But the most important thing is to have this move in mind. The rook protects on f2, the rook is protected itself, and b5 becomes a threat. Okay, so we have a question uh, on YouTube. Uh, how to play and win while playing with the same opening for both colors? So, well, actually, um, it's definitely possible. You should just understand the opening that you play better than your opponents. Of course, uh, well, uh, the position originally, when you start the game, is approximately equal. And... Um, if you calculate or, well, if you are better with calculation, you will definitely outplay your opponent. What if you play against approximately equal position? This is where the knowledge will help. So you should uh, remember uh, the most typical ideas that both players should initiate. What white should do, what black should do. You should uh, remember several plans in mind and depends on the situation. Uh, that happens in the game, you decide if this or that plan works better. So just learn plans and typical ideas and typical tactical strikes actually too. And uh, so if you know them better than your opponent, you are likely to take advantage even with black pieces. That's it. So... Queen takes a five, taking the bishop. Where I cannot play queen a five. No, I cannot play queen a five. There is a queen here, so this move doesn't work. Okay, fine. So these are two my uh, games, two my uh, small, uh, well, my small experience. Now let's talk about grandmasters games. I'm. So I prepared a lot of games, uh, but uh, I don't think that we will be able to cover all of them today. Well, at least I will show you two more, two or three more. So this is the game between Nadirbek Busatorov, which is one of the top players nowadays. He was a winner of a Rapid World Championship, I think one year ago. So e4, e5, knight e3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. And, uh, well, I do not like playing knight c3 because I see that the c-pawn should be, uh, well, I should use the c-pawn. But uh, he decided to play this move. So knight f6, this is the position that most of you uh, faced with many times. d3, a6 was played and a4 is played in order to get the bishop escape after knight a5. It also stops b5. d6, castle, bishop a6. So what do you think? How white should play in this position? Should white take? Should white ignore? Should white retreat? Uh, what are your suggestions? So bishop a2, okay, bishop a2, bishop takes a2, then what? Do you take with your rook? Well, taking with the knight doesn't look good, so maybe a rook move, but uh, then looks like your rook is out of the place of action. This is not such a situation where you can play c3 before and get your rook protecting f2 or uh, join it somehow. So taking only six looks natural in this position. I agree. But how to play then? Because he can castle and then there will be pressure here. So 
well, it's still possible to parry this pressure by doing this move. The castle, c3, a5, knight goes there. And maybe queen b3 with some ideas to attack these pawns. D b7 is a is a poison pawn, of course. But once the queen moves, uh, then we can uh, analyze capturing the b7. Once this queen moves, we can analyze capturing on b7. Then h6, then, well, the position is a bit complicated. I don't know actually how to play my bit. Well, knight f5, bishop f3, and taking on e3 with the knight. But again, I'm not sure. It's a bit uh, challenging for me. Uh, I like the move that uh, Nadirbek played here. He played knight d5. What is the idea behind this move? Well, this is definitely not possible. And uh, bishop g5 is coming. So they cannot actually tolerate this knight in the center. That's why they take e takes d5. Not the bishop, but e takes d5 because we don't want to exchange. Black experience is a lack of space. So that's why let's keep more pieces on the board. And the knight goes to e7, attacking the pawn on d5. What's What are your ideas regarding this position? Looks like we lose the pawn on d5. Can we get some compensation? So now white can make a break in the center with d4. Yeah, it's definitely correct. And after e takes d4, well, you can take it makes sense uh, because I don't think that they can capture on d5. It's a bit risky. For example, check, knight goes there and knight f5. So the king has to move then. Well, something similar happened in the game. Or you can just play bishop g5. Now it's impossible to take because bishop takes and the other knight is pinned. Uh, the game continued with knight g6. And when black played such a move, they were ready to play king f8 after this check. However, now this rook is out of the place of action and black lags in development. Let's see if white can try to exploit such an advantage. Uh, well, can you guess which move black play next? If, let's say, we play a random move, let's say h3, for example, what is the next move of black? Uh, and based on this assumption, you can suggest the next move of white. So yeah, black is going to play h6. He wants to unpin. And maybe he also wants to do this. That's why if we expect them to play h6, what should we do right away? Yes, so Jiang Do is correct. We should play bishop d3. Why? Because this time h6 is a blunder. Actually, this move was played in the game. Uh, so, for example, they could continue with queen d7, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, then knight d2 to get the knight to e4. That could make sense. Uh, white is still a pawn down, but of course their pieces are better located. The queen can go there. Uh, maybe not there, maybe to f3, then bishop f5 can be played at some point. So, but a6 was played. And now bishop g6 can be played. And uh, uh, here black just didn't realize that after h takes g5, it's simply knight g5 and knight coming to e6. So f7 is attacked and f takes g6 is just a blunder. So it's a completely losing position. That's why they finally realized that they cannot take on g5 and they took on g6, weakening the e6 square. But how to continue in this position? What should we do with this bishop now?
So yes, uh, white uh, was it, okay. Yeah, let me answer Peter's question. Yes, it was possible to take here, and after h6 to retreat with the bishop back. But uh, the white's position is not good enough <clears throat> as it is after this move, which stops h6. The pawn on d4 can be taken later. It's really difficult to protect it. And it's impossible to capture on d5 because of the pin. And once the queen goes away, it's bishop takes f6. d5 is still not a weakness, not a, such a huge weakness. So h6, bishop g6, f takes g6. And how to play in this position? So queen e2, knight h4, well, I think knight h4 is a blunder. I don't believe there is enough compensation here. So you take here, king g8, and then what? Looks like you have to take on h8, but um, I think that uh, the black's position is okay. Two minor pieces, d5 is a weakness now, so knight h4 doesn't work. Queen e2 we have instead. So probably this is what you have in mind. Then knight e6 is coming, but let's say let's say king g8. Queen e6, king f8, queen f7. Okay, fine. So knight g5. Well, let's just play queen g7. And then I'm threatening with rook e8. And I'm also threatening with this move. Ah, well, maybe it's not a threat, but anyway. So knight e6, king g8, and I think it's fine for black. So no, sacrificing the piece with queen e2 is a mistake. So, well, retreating allows to capture on d5, and after that, the e6 square is not so important. That's why bishop f6. It may undouble the pawns, but then knight h4, and g6 is a weakness. So, for example, king g7... Queen goes there and knight f5 is coming. Also, well, g5 seems to be the only way to protect it. But then it's this and rook e7 with total domination. So this is the next move. So I don't know how to play. Rook h7. Knight h4 mate. Okay. So queen f6, but rook e6, queen f4, g3 chasing the queen away, and now h3. So h3 is quite a clever move, because if queen h3, it's knight h4, and the queen is trapped for a while, while white can bring their pieces to f3 and g6. That's why queen h5. Queen d3, threatening to take here. Well, this move was possible, but then rook a1 and... Uh, there is a strong domination. So queen f5, rook goes there, and rook f4. Something similar was played in the game. Queen f5, rook f4 first, queen d5, and just knight h4, threatening to take. There is no way to, um, to defend it, because if queen g5, let's say, it's this move. And after queen takes, just rook f4 check with a discovered attack. So king goes to f7. This is the only way to save the pawn, but after queen f3, it's completely lost. So king goes to g8. How would you play in this position? Yeah. 
Ah, rook e8, yes, rook e8. So with a discovery attack. So this is how the game ended. Actually, it ended here after queen f3. Black realized that uh, there was nothing. Actually, it was Arkady Nadic playing with black pieces. And he was, well, he's, he's one of very strong grandmasters for, uh, for the last 15 years. Okay. So let's go back. Which maneuver I want you, which typical idea I want you to learn from this game? So I want you to learn a few things. If you like playing uh, Italian with knight c3, then please keep in mind the idea of knight d5. And because it changes the pawn structure after they take, and they cannot take. This knight is really dangerous. So it changes the pawn structure and provides you with the ideas of doing d4, uh, maybe c3, d4, or just d4 right away based on the pin. Uh, also, please keep in mind this idea with the weakening the e6 square. That may help you too. Okay, so we have one more game. And this time I would like to... I would like to talk about black pieces. Let me... Yeah, let's talk about this game. Uh, again, there were two strong players. Uh, they are both are masters. Uh, and uh, this time I will explain the maneuver that uh, black may play. This is a kind of a trap, uh, which sometimes can be favorable for white, sometimes for black. And this time... Uh, why didn't evaluate the position properly and got trapped? But this is a good trap. I mean, if white found a better move and wouldn't get trapped, then black's position would be still fine. So d3, knight f6, a4 was played a little bit early with the idea of a5. Black continued with d6, a5. So now, well, a4, a5 is also a very common idea that you may remember because now a6 can be played. If a6 is played, then b takes a6 or b6. Uh, let's say, okay, let me castle, which looks logical, a6. So if they take, the pawn structure is ruined. So bishops can be exchanged. There is enough pressure on a7. So this pawn will be a weakness anyway. And actually, you don't need to take right now. If they play b6, then look at this bishop. After c3, b4, where this bishop goes? Also, look at all these uh, pawns. They are on the dark squares. So the light squares are weak that you can potentially take advantage of. But the main idea is that the bishop is the object of the attack. So a5, a6 makes sense. So that's why black is forced to play this move. c3, they move the bishop in advance to a7. And now queen b3, adding more pressure. However, castle. White castles too. And uh, what do you think black should be doing in this position? There is no tactical strike that you can initiate right away. Just slowly maneuver your pieces. Knight e7. Knight e7 or d7? D7. D7. Any other suggestions? Knight e7. Okay, so we have two knights move. Uh, two knight moves. What uh, then? Okay. Yeah, so it's hard to suggest anything, actually, because, well, this is unlikely to be a good move. Knight d2 just. Uh, well, bishop e6, which is quite common here, doesn't work at all. Uh, actually, we cannot move the bishop because b7 this time is vulnerable because there is no knight a5 move. And this, this is not protected. So, for example, bishop d7, queen b7, rook b8, uh, queen takes, and uh, there is no way to trap the queen. 
So let's talk about this move with the idea of doing knight c5. Well, you move the knight away. How can I play? I think I can do something like bishop g5 because, because uh, f6 is not possible. It's illegal. So queen has to go to e8. Knight c5 is coming, but how do you actually benefit of this move? It's okay for me to move the queen to c2 and later uh, take advantage of this piece's activity. Another move you can consider is h6, like uh, uh, like Jürgen suggested here on YouTube. Uh, so h6, mm, well, yes, uh, yeah, h6 can be played. Yeah, I think this is a possibility, but uh, h6 is a bit passive. How do you continue after that? Uh, knight d7, we analyzed. Knight e7 was played in the game because we can just move the knight here. So here many, many of you may say, well, but this guy can just move the bishop to g5 and it's risky when he takes. Well, guys, yes, you're right. It's risky. Actually, wait a sec. Knight e7, knight g5 in this position doesn't work because of d5. And I just block the attack. And I can play h6 later in the game. So knight e7 helps with it. Uh, so bishop g5, this is what was played in the game. So they are going to take, and usually doubling the pawns and exposing the king is definitely a mistake. Uh, but what about this position? Well, yeah, instead of bishop g5, it was possible to play bishop e3 and provoke an exchange of the bishops. But, uh, well, what I don't like about bishop e3 is that, let's say, knight g6, and if you take, then I got the f4 square for my knight. Oh, of course, rook takes first, and then I get the f4 square for my knight. So that's why I would keep this uh, bishop alive to capture on the full once the knight goes there. So what about in this position? White, black played c6. And white decided to capture on f6, which this time is a more a disadvantage for them. So playing c6 was a kind of a positional trap. And this is what I definitely ask you to remember, especially if you play um, e4, e5 positions with black pieces. Well, if you play with white, you can also learn it. What do you think? Uh, why this time taking on f6 is a mistake? How can you explain it on your own words? in your own words. It opens the G file for the rook and there's too many pieces available for black to attack on the king side. Uh-huh, yes, you're right. But uh, John, you um, didn't mention another very important feature of this position. Can you guess which? Now the bishop's one. What, what about the bishop? Bishop took the knight, so now, now black has the double, double bishops. Ah, I mean bishop pair. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, there is another important thing. Uh, okay. So if let me make a few moves, uh, just to illustrate it. Uh, so here, let's say I just play any random move, and in this position, okay. Yeah. Let me actually. Say this, this, maybe I don't know, queen c7 or what. Uh, bishop takes f6, and this is quite favorable. f5 can be played, but it more weakens the position. But look at what we had. This knight is not developed, and the queen is located on the other side. So this is the most important thing. The queen is somewhere else and cannot, uh, now knight h4 doesn't make any sense. It's still a 5 anyway. So the queen is not joining the attack. That's why this king is not vulnerable. But instead, white black gets an opportunity to attack through the G file, exactly like uh, what John said. So this 
now this is favorable for black because white pieces are not prepared for the g file to be opened because of their queen being out of the place of action and their knight their other knight is still on b1 so what happened queen c2 f5 was played immediately d5 is also a threat uh, so bishop retreats knight goes to g6 and the next move was quite obvious queen f6 to protect the f7 then rook g8 and maybe knight h4 knight f4 this is exactly what happened in the game and black succeeded with this attack so d4 trying to open the position this is definitely logical because uh, one when, uh, when the player is attacking you on the king side you should look for how to initiate a counter-attack in the center but uh, after knight f4 it seems to be too late g3 is the only move well doing something like that is just a blunder you can just take on d4 then take on d4 once again if you want uh, so g3 and f takes e4 this is where white made a critical mistake but it's actually uh, already too late because their position is much worse. For example, if queen takes a4, it's bishop f5. Oh, d5 didn't work because of queen e5 and the queens are exchanged now and this knight goes uh, to the center and is not hanging anymore. So, but bishop f5 works. Queen e3, bishop g4, and there is a pin that... Uh, is impossible to get rid of because this bishop is out of the game and this is of course a blunder bishop takes f3 is just a checkmate so the game continued with d takes e5 can you please tell me what uh, white missed in this position how would you play for black Yeah, thank you, Peter. Yes, it's a checkmate in two, starting with knight h3. Knight h3, doesn't matter where the king goes. Actually, this is where white resigned, but let's say here it's queen f3 mate. Even if the king goes here, it's still queen f3 mate. Uh, well, the uh, white was under so strong pressure, so they were confused and make such a simple mistake. But... Uh, even if they played the best move, queen takes a4, their position is already lost. So from this game, I want you to remember this thing. That sometimes you may let your opponent to take on f6 and double your pawns. And it can be favorable for you if you see that you can uh, initiate your activity on the king side faster than your opponent can do it. So as I said, knight h4 and queen g h5 cannot be played in this position uh, because the queen is too far from the place of action. These are is the most important factor that you have to take into account before setting this trap with knight a7, knight a7 and c6. If, for example, white continued playing logically, like let's say queen c2, knight g6, then h6 was played, then uh, well, then the bishop retreats to e3 maybe. Then the position would be still approximately equal. But after bishop f6, black has a very strong attack. Okay, so today we were talking about uh, several typical ideas that you definitely have to keep in mind if you play uh, Italian game. Doesn't matter whether you play it with white or black, it's actually symmetrical. So some of the ideas that work work well for black definitely works for white. And some of the ideas that uh, white should initiate in Italian game, especially in the lines that I play, uh, sometimes can be played for black too. But, well, I do not play e5 myself, uh, only occasionally. So I play Sicilian defense because even with black pieces, I want to play for a win. Okay, guys, do you have any questions? Because we are about to finish our webinar today. So I don't know what is the topic of our next webinar next Sunday, but there will be a webinar. 
Uh, if you have any suggestions, you're welcome. So people who join us on uh, YouTube, guys, you can uh, instead uh, join our Zoom meeting in case if you register for the webinar at uh, Chesland's page. I'll send you the link. Any questions? Okay, Daniel, you are welcome. So this is the link to register. Again, if you have any questions, uh, just message me at tricksofchess at gmail.com. See you then. Okay, so there is a suggestion of doing a webinar devoted to Vienna game. Okay, maybe because uh, this is the opening that I was playing when I was younger. Let me consider it. Um, unfortunately, I am very busy these weeks because I, I'm also doing a course for Chessable uh regarding tactical vision and uh i'm not i'm not done with it but i have to be done because it has some deadlines okay so well maybe maybe it will be vienna game but not not next sunday okay thank you for coming and uh, see you